Naomi MacArthur is five foot two and can lift double her weight. She's a fitness instructor and is proud of her strength. But just five months ago, her life was very different. Um, so yeah, I'm terrified. I think, sorry. In November 2014, Naomi decided to get breast implants. She knew she looked great, but she felt like she was dying. I had the most horrific symptoms. Like, I remember I started getting like severe pains in my stomach, like gut problems. The tiredness that I felt, it almost felt like I had like ran a marathon and dug like a million trenches and like done loads of stuff and I hadn't done anything. I was writing with a pen I said to my mum like I actually can't write, it's too hard, like writing with a pen was that tiring. Naomi changed her diet and made lifestyle changes but the symptoms kept coming including hair loss, allergies and rashes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> It's just like every time I think about it, it upsets me. Of course. I knew I'd get emotional doing this. Yeah. Take your time, we can stop whenever you want. It's been like absolutely horrific, like the amount of pain and like suffering that I've had to go through and going to clinics and like hospitals and doctors and saying to them like, I'm so ill. And they're just like saying that it's not to do with the implants. Last summer, Naomi discovered breast implant illness, a condition which consists of a broad range of autoimmune symptoms. She joined online support groups and soon found that there were tens of thousands of other women like her. She decided to start a video diary. Like if I'd gone to the clinic before I had my breast surgery and, I'd, and they had told me that, you know, you can develop autoimmune conditions, I would have never had implants. And I think people need to be more aware of this. Go down, and I'm scared. Naomi made the difficult decision to pay thousands of pounds to have her implants removed. There was no guarantee her health would improve. Hopefully, for it's, it's for the best. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be for the best. I'm alive. <laughs> Not too close. Very quickly, the symptoms that had plagued Naomi's life for the past four years disappeared. I can't believe how bloody amazing I feel and how much I've bounced back. It's insane and like I said, my eyes are gone completely like white. Like, what the hell? I had completely bloodshot eyes all the time and my eyes are white now. This is crazy. But despite stories like Naomi's, there's still scepticism in parts of the medical community. I spoke to one surgeon who said he does not believe that breast implant illness is a thing. How does it feel hearing something like that? I find that really, actually saying that is kind of, kind of a bit offensive. I feel a bit offended by it really because I know that like what I experienced was real. Like who are you going to believe, the surgeon or the, who's making money or the thousands of other women who are ill? There have been more than a million breast implant operations in the UK and most of them have turned out well. But complications can arise which can ruin lives. Complications which some women say they were never warned about. Consultant plastic surgeon Nora Nugent has helped patients like Naomi. Breast implant illness is, is, is poorly recognised to be perfectly honest. Um, it's where women have a, a series of symptoms and they can vary from person to person. They haven't conclusively proven that silicone causes direct harm to the body's tissues or causes these reactions. But there are not very many studies directly studying these effects. And if you get an improvement after having your implants removed, then clearly that was the right course of action to take. Going forward, do you think all surgeons should be warning their patients about breast implant illness? Ideally, yes. I think it's, it's the 
I think patients need the most up-to-date information possible. Leading surgeons, including the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons, have told this programme that women should be told about the risk of breast implant illness ahead of surgery, despite there still being limited scientific evidence. Anyone who believes they may have the condition is advised to see their GP, but removing an implant does not guarantee improved health. Breast implant illness has been being discussed amongst women for decades. Do you think it's shocking that we still don't know exactly what it is and what's going on? I think it's quite disappointing that we don't have all the answers, but I think it's encouraging that we are still looking for the answers. Hundreds of thousands of women were affected by the PIP implant scandal which broke in 2010. The implants were twice as likely to rupture and were filled with silicon used in mattresses. Six years later, a National Safety Implant Register was set up and women are encouraged to join it so they can be traced if something goes wrong in the future. It's hoped it will also lead to a better understanding of breast implant illness. Naomi and I have come to meet a woman who is preparing to have her implants removed, also known as explanted. Hello! Hi! 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 Steph Harris has tried three different types of implants and each time has experienced autoimmune symptoms. This is um, one of my explanted implants I've got here. So this was my original PIP implant that I had first time round. Steph previously had breast cancer, but her doctors believe her symptoms, the chronic fatigue and pain, are implant related. It's cost her a lot, including being a nurse. It's so isolating. I spend 90% of my time alone, lying down in my bed. Um, I can't read for very long. Um, I can't write things for very long. My memory is, uh, really struggles with it. Um, I watch movies and that's what I do. 90% of the time and then people see me like this with my makeup on and up and they think well you're fine there's nothing wrong with you but only those that are really close to me see that after this I'll be in bed for two days because I'm running on adrenaline right now. To deal with the breast cancer was one thing but to be honest that was easier. That's going to sound really strange. The chemotherapy was much easier to deal with than the chronic fatigue and I know that for a lot of people that will just sound completely ridiculous but I guess I'm unique, I can say I've, I've been through both and this is harder. The UK's medical devices watchdog has told us more than 1,500 adverse incidents involving breast implants have been reported in the past five years. It currently does not recognise breast implant illness. Steph wants the MHRA's reporting system to be made more accessible so the true scale of implant complications are known. Steph, you're having your explant on the 15th of July. Yes. So a few weeks' time. Naomi, have you got any advice for her? Completely understand how horrible it is. I'll be phoning you because I'm worried about this. Yeah, I <laughs> know. But it's literally like what kind of like made me feel better about it all was just like knowing that like thinking about next year. That's it. I've been, you know, it's the little, it's dreaming about things like that, like going for a walk. And yeah, if I could get back to work, even if I just get a little bit yeah. more energy to just make life a bit easier, it would be fantastic. You know, like in the end, like health is the most important thing. Yeah. It's now a week since Steph had her implants removed. She says she's feeling pretty good and has already been for a few gentle walks. She's hopeful about the future.